What is up, everybody? It's your boy Morpheus, and today on another episode of Next on the Next Gen Geek Channel, I want to discuss a bit more about the future of the MCU and what that entails. As we know, the Marvel Fox deal is currently on, on its way, and we should be hearing confirmation if the deal goes through either sometime this year or next year if it does go through and everything is finalized. So, to kick things off, I want to start. Here's the the format. Basically, we're going to discuss the movie stuff first right everything in the cinematic universe on the big screen you know we go to the theaters that sort of thing then i want to dive deep into the possible big bads that they can use as well so the, the and i have some i have some thoughts on that as well next up is also going to be the tv side so things on either abc things on netflix things on their own streaming service so that's the format and to get right into it we're going to jump into the mcu the stuff that we're going to be seeing in the cinematic universe in the next phase and beyond. So to kick things off, first we know that Marvel and Kevin Feige has come out and said that they are developing about 20 plus films years and years after 2020, which is outstanding. I give you that. That's absolutely amazing. And we do know about one film, and that's Spider-Man Far From Home. Yes, the title has been confirmed from an alleged leak that Tom Holland made. Come on, Tom. Like, why? Why, Tom? Why would you do something like that, man? Like, like come on. Infinity War and then you die. Like... Anyway, to kick things off, yes, Spider-Man Far From Home, and we're also hearing rumors of either Mysterio being in this film, Spider-Woman, uh, Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman, uh, Peter Parker going from different like cities all over the world. Like it sounds, it sounds pretty cool. Me personally, I would prefer Spider-Man at home, you know, because that Spider-Man New York goes hand in hand. It's, it feels so odd to do a Spider-Man film that's not majorly taking place in New York, but that's one of the films. And another one is a Black Widow film that we're also hearing rumors about, and a possible female director attached to it. Now, me personally. I'm not big, I like, I love Black Widow, don't get me wrong, but a solo film of her, I'm not quite sure, maybe it could work, um, ideally, if they're gonna do that, I would prefer Black Widow possibly in the past, you know, and then we could, maybe the, they could do Black Widow film centered around like that Winter Soldier, um, part in her life where she got shot, where she was shot through to the engineer like that, I think that would be pretty cool, right? And next up is also Guardians 3, and James Gunn, he's currently still writing the script for that, as we all know, as, as far as if you guys have done research or whatnot. If not, then let me tell you. They're doing, he's still developing the script. I think he said he's on the first, second draft. I Don't quote me, I'm not quite sure, but that's what I've been hearing. And we're also hearing that because of after the events of Infinity War, that they're going to adapt, if not include new members. You know, so they're, they're soft rebooting almost the Guardians franchise, you know, bringing new members in. And I want to touch on that as to who they could possibly include later in this video. And next up, we all know, after the success of Black Panther in February, give props to Ryan Coogler and, and Shadow Boseman, Eric Kill, everyone in the cast. Ev everyone did a fantastic, I personally love the film. If you didn't, that's you. Me, I loved it. So, as we know, Black Panther 2 is also coming, because success and why not and Black Panther 3. Even after the events of Infinity War, spoiler alert, this will be spoilers from Infinity War, Black Panther is one of the f one of the members that unfortunately has dusted away. <laughs> dusted away. <laughs> Sorry, I know it's messed up, but it's, it's true. He dusted away. And so in Black Panther 2 and 3, what can we expect? Well, my personal opinion, and this is where I'm hoping the Fox-Disney deal goes through, is that I really hope we get to see Namor. Now I'm not saying Storm, but no, more or less Namor, because I think Namor will be a good way to introduce one the mutants, and then two, in the comics we uh, we know that Wakandans and Atlanteans don't really have a strong history with one another. So I think if they can use Namor to as a villain in the Black Panther sequel, if not maybe the third movie, I think that would be absolutely amazing. And one of the ways for, for Disney and, and, and Kevin Feige to introduce uh, the X-Men and even mutants in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Next up, also want to talk about Ms. Marvel. So yes, Ms. Marvel 
uh, the Muslim character from the comics will possibly be making a debut. Kevin Feige has touched upon this in recent interviews and he, he's been saying that he loves the character and he definitely wants to do a movie out of it. And there's possibilities of a Miss Marvel movie. But if you're going to do Miss Marvel, you have to do Cap introduce Captain Marvel. And that's also one of the aspects that he said as well that in order for us to do Miss Marvel, we have to do and incorporate and use Captain Marvel and introduce her first. And I'll get onto the Captain Marvel stuff in a bit later. So Ms. Marvel possibly in, in development, but if she is going to be coming in, it's going to be after the Captain Marvel movie. Next up is Captain Marvel 2 and 3. And now this is thing where things get interesting. And one of the aspects is that with Captain Marvel right now, it looks like it's finished production. But there are rumors of possibly Monica Rambeau, a.k.a. the first Captain Marvel, but now in the comics, new comics, she's known as Spectrum. And so this is going to be really interesting because here's the thing with that Captain Marvel. She was the first one. And then in recent comics, she's basically a new character called Spectrum. She has the ability to manipulate and control light into certain areas. And so that got me thinking as far as, okay, if they're going to introduce Spectrum in this one, what about Captain Marvel 2 and 3? Could they introduce Blue Marvel? Could they introduce Hyperion? Sentry? Like, there's so much they can do with that Captain Marvel to really dive into more cosmic stuff. So I think that's going to be one aspect. And now I'm going to get to that in a bit later in this video. So, next up, Ant-Man 3. That's going to happen after Ant-Man 2 just came out. It's been pretty really good reception from that movie so that's probably a definite but also want to touch upon what the director said in a recent interview later in this video then we also have Doctor Strange 2 recently they've come out and said we have ideas for it but nothing's really quite like they're not writing it yet it's not in pre-production maybe it is maybe it's not maybe they're keeping it under wraps and they're not saying anything to us but Doctor Strange 2 that's also gonna come as well as a possible the possible inclusion of Nightmare, which has me very excited as a fan because I've been wanting to see Nightmare on screen. Ever since they announced Doctor Strange, I was like, please, I want to see Nightmare. Other than Dormammu, I want to see Nightmare. But yeah, so now we're going to go into the possible franchises. We just talked a bit about the rumor and most likely films to come, but now let's talk about possible new franchises to make it to the MCU. Now they did say that they are they wanted to go go more cosmic and they want to introduce new franchises other than the Avengers and Guardians. So another film that's in pre-production and in development of some sort are the Eternals. Yes, the Eternals are possibly making their way into the MCU sooner rather than later because of in the next Avengers film. There's rumors that Kronos, one of the Eternals, might be appearing in that movie. So Depending on if you're an Eternal fan or whatnot, you, you could be excited. I'm a bit excited because, to be honest, even though I love comics and I read some, I don't know much about the Eternal. So seeing a cinematic version of them and see how Marvel incorporates that is quite interesting. And that also goes into something else as far as other possible movies they can include in the cinematic universe. Next up, now this is highly unlikely, but this is... Personally, I think what they can really do and really bring this franchise and really almost this race of power people back into the cinematic universe, and that's an Inhumans. Now, yes, the Inhumans was on ABC for a limited amount of time, had its almost first run, first season in a sense, and wasn't perceived well. I wasn't a big fan of it. I thought they could have done a lot better. Honestly, Marvel TV, they should have let Marvel Studios just make an Inhumans movie. Because I think that would have been way better. But it is what it is. But because of the next Avengers film and possible time travel. I think this is a good way to reintroduce the in in Inhumans back into the MCU in the most proper way. <laughs> and after that. And this is when I was talking about the Captain Marvel film. So, 2 and 3. And just in general. So if Monica Rambo is one of these characters that's going to be making their debut. Then I think if they really want to make a new franchise and almost a new superhero team, I think one of the great teams they can do, other than Fantastic Four and X Men, because that with that we have to wait till the deal goes through, are introducing the Ultimates. Yes, the Ultimates, as in Black Panther. So the Ultimates in the comics, 
They're basically a mix of characters such as Captain Marvel, Black Panther, Blue Marvel, and Monica Rambeau, Spectrum, and I think a couple others. Don't quote me, I have to remember. But yes, I think an Ultimates movie would be amazing, and that can be like your Space Avengers. You have your Avengers on Earth, and then you have your Space Avengers. And not your Guardians, no, your Space Avengers. And you can go more into like the Kree Skull War, um, Kree Skrull War, not Skull, <laughs> the Kree Skrull War, and I think that would be absolutely fantastic. And even maybe introduce just new cosmic characters. And the next film I also want to talk about, and the next character I think a lot of people are excited about, is Nova. Yes, we're hearing rumors and there's words that Nova could be making his debut. And that has me very excited. For me, I kind of wish he was in the next Guardians film, but from the sounds of it, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So if anything, I would love a Nova movie and really bringing him into the MCU. Now, the next thing I want to discuss is New Avengers. Yes, so I'm going to dive deep into two Avengers teams. So, as we know, the next Avengers film is coming out next year, and I think they're going to rebrand the Avengers name. Like, I don't think they're going to keep going Avengers 4. I think Avengers 4 is going to be the end of, like, that first Avengers saga. Then... I think to really rebrand themselves, they're going to call them New Avengers, and this might include Captain Marvel, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Ant-Man, you know, new members, and Black Panther, uh, all that type of stuff. Maybe some old characters, like Iron Man may stay, or Captain America, who knows, you know, War Machine, James Rhodey might be extended, so I would love to see War Machine and Captain Marvel a little romance, but who knows, the po possibilities are literally endless at this point. And not only that, but also I want to discuss Young Avengers. So recently Kevin Feige and even some people from Ant-Man and the Wasp cast has talked about Cassie Lang. And there's also rumors of them possibly hiring an older version of Cassie Lang for the next Avengers film. So could they be hinting at Stature? Could they be hinting at a Young Avengers? So could we be seeing Hulkling, Wiccan, you know, so many other characters. Maybe even Kang the Conqueror, you know, and in the Young Avengers in the comics, one of the members, Reed Richards, I forgot his exact name, but ultimately he actually becomes Kang the Conqueror. So I think there's a lot they can do with the Young Avengers and really go even deeper and go even crazier with the multiverse theory and all of that. And next up, and before I get into the X-Men Fox deal, I want to discuss more about other characters they can include. One of them, I'll talk about was Namor. Yes, you can introduce him in a Black Panther film and then spin him off into his own film. I think that would be absolutely great. Um, and then they could also introduce Sentry. So I say Sentry instead of Hyperion because Marvel has a tendency to combine two characters. And so when you look at Sentry and Hyperion, they're somewhat similar, not exactly the same as far as their power sets. But I think Sentry introduces a new aspect of more of a psychological um, aspect to a character because of the void aspect of Sentry. And honestly, I think Sentry is also the name is more marketable than Hyperion. Uh, Sentry, Superman, the S, the S. So I think Disney and Marvel Studios might want to combat that, combat Superman with a character called Sentry. And next up, this is a possibility of what they can do. I'm not sure if it's... Um, what exactly like the actual future entails and that's an a-force movie so a-force in the comics basically a female avengers team um they have a lot of females already so i think there's a strong possibility if they wanted to to do an a-force film but we're gonna it's, it's basically we're gonna have to wait and see and how many people really want it and if that's something that marvel studios wants to incorporate and then next up, I also want to say is Thunderbolts. So I think Thunderbolts, even though I would prefer it to be rated R, I think they can really stretch it PG-13, really stretch that PG-13 rating. Um, similar to BVS and has a theatrical or extended whatever on DVD with rated R. So I think they can really stretch that PG-13 limit for the Thunderbolts. So introduce you know, Red Hulk if possible because of the whole universal thing. Who knows? We have to wait and see. And then next up, now I was thinking long and hard. How would you, how could you introduce the X? Now this is when I'm talking about the Fox Marvel deal. Now if that goes through, of course they're gonna do Fantastic Four. They may even push Fantastic Four more than X Men 
to be put on the big screen to be honest because Fantastic Four is Marvel's first family and they don't want to do justice by them and the X-Men that's a lot of people it's in a lot of people hearts including my dad's he hates nearly every X-Men film <laughs> except Logan and Deadpool <laughs> those are the only like mutant X-Men films he enjoys but um other than that like maybe they could do to really introduce X-Men you introduce Namor but then you just straight up do an Avengers vs. X-Men film. And that can be relating to the Dark Phoenix. And again, that drastically changes the MCU again. So I think Avengers vs. X-Men has a strong possibility. They can do a the new Avengers and then they do like um, a smaller version of the X-Men. They don't use everyone, but they use the characters that are ne necessary to push the MCU, to push relationships, and to push the boundaries even further. So, other than that, it's your boy Morpheus. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit that like if you like this button and if you agree with some of the points that I've made. If not, but you still enjoyed the video, still hit the like button. Still subscribe because there's plenty more to come. Again, this is the channel of the MCU, DC Films, DC Shows, Universe, all that type of good stuff. Video games, Spider-Man's coming out, so stay tuned to Spider-Man PS4 for some, some videos on that. Anyway, guys. It's been a blast. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button if you want more. And I'll see you guys in the next video.